everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Sue. I'm Chelsea. And that's Charlie. Hi everybody. Special guest today wearing his green little hoodie looking darn cute. He was a bit chilly. So he Sue, was. Sue put his sweater on it. Now he's, he's not shaking. That's right. He's got a little beaver canoe hoodie on. He's looking adorable. <laughs> Anyway, before we get started, if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click on the post notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to do some more Name That Tune. If you'd like to play at home, you can play along with Chels. You ready, Chels? I am. Okay, let's do it. Close your eyes if you don't know what song it is. If you want to play, bring your friends in, bring your family, and let's do this one up. Here we go. Back to the 1970s. This is a great song. What do you think? Uh, do you have it? No. It's My Sweet Lord by George Harrison. This is hmm. a fantastic song. I didn't have that. All right, so we're going to get into it. But before we do, don't forget to stay to the end of the video so that you can hear my fun fact for the day. Here we go. Chels was just asking if this was a song that he did on his own or with the Beatles, but yes, this was a song that he did on his own. And it was actually mm -hmm. his first single that he did on his own, and it was actually his best or most uh, successful of all his singles. Wow. So sometimes you just get it right the very first time, right? <laughs> what a fabulous song. It's just such a great feeling song, you know? Again, again, pretty mellow. Again, mellow, yeah. yeah. Got the mellow ones going on today. <laughs> just feeling it. Feeling the beauty today.
Peace for sure, George. Hmm. Oh, that was a beautiful song. And uh, if anybody knows what a lot of the words were, what they mean, uh, if you could translate them for us uh, into English, that would be fantastic. Uh, obviously, I don't know. I mean, I've heard of Harry Krishna, but a lot of the other words, I don't really know what they mean. So mm. did you know what any of them meant? Just? No, no, not at all. No, no I've, so, I've heard Harry Krishna. Yeah. Um, but uh, Hari Rama, but I, I I don't know what they stand for. Yeah. So, and there were so many of them in there. And I was love to know. Just, yeah. yeah, he was a very spiritual was, man. And he was really into a lot of the Eastern um, the Eastern religions. Hmm. But I think he, he, he sort of... As a spiritual man, I think the Hare Krishna and the Hallelujah, which is a very Christian kind of thing, mm -hmm. I think he thought that they kind of were very similar in a lot of ways and, and kind of could join in. Mm -hmm. You could see them kind of standing together. But I'd like to know what some of those other words meant. So if you know, put them in the comments and let us know because that would be very interesting to, mm -hmm. to find out what some of them actually mean. Mm -hmm. But that was a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you like George Harrison and you want to hear more George Harrison songs, put those in the comments for us. And we would be happy to do more of those or maybe the Beatles songs. You want to do more of those, but those in the comments, we've done a few of those, but it'd be great to do more. Mm -hmm. So my fun fact is it's, um, the, this song actually sparked quite a bit of drama. Uh, he was actually sued by a company bright tunes that, uh, had the rights to, uh, he's so fine by the chiffons. And they were claiming that it was, that was basically a ripoff with the music of the song. And a court actually did find that the song was, in fact, uh, almost exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And it was the same chord progression. But the whole, this was a massive drama. It started in 71 and it didn't completely get finished until 93. And it actually turned George off actually recording for a little while because he was just kind of really crushed. Because mm -hmm. even he was saying that, you know, he didn't intend to do this. And even the judge said, well... You may not have intended to do it, but it still is there, and and it was mm -hmm. still like unintentional plagiarism, and so wow. he he ended up, and it was interesting. His he had a uh, um, his um, manager at the time was named Alan Klein, and he actually was on his side for a while, but they had a bit of a falling out, and um, then he actually later on started to help out Bright Tunes. Oh, so uh, yeah, so they had, it was quite a I guess it was quite a bad falling out anyway eventually George had to pay 1.6 million dollars to this company for this song as because they were saying that it was plagiarized however uh, Alan Klein ended up buying this record company because it was going into receivership and when he bought it he thought he was going to get all the money but it turned out then that they said well because you bought it you don't actually you don't actually get all of the money for this so he only ended up getting the amount of money that he paid for the record company, which is just over a half a million dollars. So in the end, he ended up not really getting a whole lot more than... Oh, wow. But he, he seemed like he was a little bit sketchy. But Yeah, yeah that seems a bit sketchy. But yeah, yeah it was a long draw. It's almost like a I'm TV sure a movie. It, it, was, yeah. it yeah. could have been a TV movie. This just mm -hmm. drama about one song, but <laughs> one peaceful, loving song one and all this drama and behind it. Song. <laughs> not so spiritual the spirit of money anyway i think that wraps it up for today so thanks everybody for joining us everybody have a joyful day and we'll see you all again next time Good night, bye bye